I am just, let's start with that. We know LeBron's super smart. We know LeBron is super strategic. We know LeBron, you and I had something in common last night. We were all watching that game. Yes. And LeBron's sitting there thinking, I joined, I joined an old friend before. And I got frustrated with how often my old friend was hurt. Chris Paul's hurt again. Last four years, Chris, he's played fewer games every year. I just don't see Houston as the spot for him. I don't. Do you? I see Philadelphia as the spot. I know it you It hasn't do. changed with me the last few weeks. Once I was told by people close to LeBron that he wants to play off the ball, if he has a teammate who can make plays for other guys, that's Ben Simmons, then it's a no-brainer. Stay in the East. Because part of Le- – like, LeBron, I think this – I think. We'll see what his motivation is. I think his last part of his career should be about chasing the GOAT. Yeah, that's it. Okay? To do that, it's not just going to be – he's going to have the individual numbers. Yeah. It's going to be he has to win some more championships. Which means get rested a little more in the regular season, be ready to go in the postseason. Yes, yes. So that means joining stars. Which I think Philadelphia will have too. You know, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And you stay in the Eastern Conference. Wherever he goes is going to be tough because even the East now with Boston, I th- think Milwaukee's going to be an up and coming team, but that's going to be tough. But the West, I just don't understand it. if winning is the number one motivation. Winning titles. To me, if he comes to LA, it's, winning is obviously still a motivating factor, but it's not the ultimate goal. If you come to LA, winning to me is no longer the number one priority. It's, I wanted to be in L.A. I like the lifestyle. My businesses are out here. My family likes it out here. It will be good. Me and Chris Paul, me and Paul George, will be very competitive, and we'll have a shot. But it won't, you won't be the favorite. Why would you come play with Golden State, Houston? New Orleans is up and coming. Minnesota's going to get its act together. I mean, I don't understand that. Stay in the East. You can maybe win titles. Uh, and that's when you chase because part of your argument, in addition to the wins, is if you have been to the finals almost twice as much as Michael Jordan. Right. If you could say, yeah, I was I only won five, but I was there 11 times. Yeah, that's a big part of the argument. And getting to the finals clearly easier in the East. You're starting to move me and sway me on that <laughs> Philadelphia thing. You really are. I mean, it's it's I thought about this last night and last night. I said, I'm watching the Rockets and LeBron's watching that. And I'm thinking. Chris Paul's an older version of Dwayne Wade, probably not as good a version of Dwayne Wade. He did that old thing. He joined a friend. He got tired of the friend getting old and getting hurt. They had salary cap issues. Because you were paying Bosch, LeBron, Wade so much, you had a little bench. You had no point guard. In the end, I just canceled the Rockets last night. Now, let me say this. I started my show saying this. You can win movie of the year. Doesn't mean you're Raging Bull. You can win band of the year. It doesn't mean you're you 2 or the Beatles. Listen, man, I just watched the Houston team mentally and physically at various stages get into Golden State's kitchen. They push them around. And I truly believe Eric Gordon's right. Chris Paul's healthy. They were winning this series, and they were mentally winning this series. I I just think less of Golden State today. I don't think they rank up there with the Pistons' bad boys and MJ's Bulls. I, I think you're a prisoner of the moment. They had a tough series, all right? They, they went seven, so now they're not an all-time great team. I mean, we're used to them winning in four, five, blowing everybody out. They had a gut-check series. And now we're ready to say they're not an all-time Dominated great team. on the glass. Dominated in the paint. Kevin Durant is almost invisible defensively. I can point to every single all-time great team and give you hiccups. More than hiccups. This was a hiccup. I can give you some real ailments with the all-time great. Magic and, and, and Kareem, Showtime Lakers, all-time great team, yeah. right? Swept by Dr. J and Moses Malone. Beaten 4-1 by Ralph Sampson and Akeem Olajuwon. They're lucky Ralph Sampson got hurt. Because <laughs> maybe if Ralph Sampson hadn't got hurt, they don't win those last two titles. All right. The, the Bad Boys Pistons, their first championships, Byron Scott and Magic Johnson had hamstring injuries. Bird won three titles in 13 years. Tim Duncan, as great as he was, never repeated, never was back-to-back champion. Like every – the one great team – that did not have any stumbles like that 
once he started winning, was Michael Jordan. And that's why we call him the GOAT. Every other great team, I can say, yeah, but, yeah, but remember that? Remember that? And this is their remember that moment that they went seven with the team with the best record in the league? And we're trailing <laughs> until Chris Paul got hurt. You don't think a little, little less of them today. A My, little. Th- what I think about the Warriors is they need to remember who they are. You are a fluid, free-flowing, ball movement team. Don't get locked. The, the ISO with Durant should be your last resort. Don't make it your first resort. And that's what they did at times against Houston, and that's why they had a tough series. But, again, they still want – even Jordan went seven with Indiana. He didn't go seven in the finals, but he went seven in some of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Okay, you don't buy into that theory. Here's another one. <laughs> Listen, man, there's a reason convertible sports cars. There's a reason they're good for seven months and never great for 12. It's called winter. There's a reason now James Harden in back-to-back years in the playoffs is not quite the same player he is in the regular season because he's not the MVP, he's the NFP. He's the most fallible player. And in the regular (laughs) season, you get the nudge and you get the bump and you get the free throw. Chris, you've been watching this league for three decades. I'm older, four. Every round of the playoffs, More physicality is allowed. He went down in every series in the playoffs. Turnovers went up in every series. Efficiency, three-point percent shooting went down in every series. That's his winter. It's not going to change. Westbrook, now, Harden's better than Westbrook. So Westbrook fades in early May. Okay. (laughs) In late May, Harden, the better player, fades. This is not going away. Well, look. His game is built on the nudge and the cheap whistle. He averaged 30 points. Oh, boy. And took one of the best teams, in most people's opinions, one of the best teams of all time, to seven games. He took? He's got two Hall of Famers on his team, including him, him and Chris Paul. And and Chris Paul, we know, wasn't there for the last two games. He faced a team with four Hall of Famers. He wasn't supposed to win. They weren't supposed I don't care about the 65-win regular season. He was facing a team. I got one all-star in game six and seven against four all-stars. That's what we're going to say in the next round. We're not going to rip LeBron. Oh, yes, we are. For getting spanked by the Spur- by the Warriors. You, we, not, we, but, we already know. Everybody is about, like, so you he's going to lose. It's going to be ugly. It better have been better to lose to Boston. You're not going to, and I'm not going to, but America's going to. They're going <laughs> to savage LeBron when he gets swept or loses in five. Let me say this about Harden, because it can change. What Harden has to do, and I hope he's listening, what James Harden has to do is what Michael Jordan did when Detroit was beating him, what LeBron did before he won his championships. You have to take personal inventory. You have to say, okay, what happened to me? And what happens to James Harden time and time again in the postseason is he wears down. Yes. He gets fatigued. Not so much, I don't know that it's mentally, but physically. Because it is difficult to shake and bake in 15 dribbles between the legs, <laughs> behind the back, faint slights, all that. <laughs> 20 that times a happening. game? No, and. That that's wears you out. <laughs> and, and by the way, when you're. I love what you just did. It was almost like the Seinfeld, the Julie Lewis <laughs> Dreyfus. I love what you're saying. It's not only hard to do that, but this is now the hundred and first game and the yes. hundred second game and the hundred and the refs are allowing more banging. So it's one thing to shake and bake in the regular season. Now we're adding 20 games and now the refs are letting you get hit while you're doing it. Yeah. So hey, I agree. He's got to take some inventory. So what he's got to do is he's got to get himself together physically. Like Michael Jordan said, when Detroit was beating me, I wasn't strong enough to withstand the pounding over seven games. Harden has to realize that. Work on your legs. Get you know. I know he works hard already, but you have to take it to another level. LeBron James has taken it to another level. You have to go to that level. And then D'Antoni, they got to figure out, can we play this way for 100 games and win a championship? Chris Broussard was money today. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.